Okay guys, so this is uh, charges, how to find the charge of chemicals, but I'm also going to put a little bit of an emphasis on how to do note taking as well. So if you could start please by taking out a page, just like A4 paper, lined paper, I've done a slightly bigger A3 paper so you can see it, and if you can set it up in the following way. So across the top, we need our name. That's really important because if you then lose it, you're going to be able to get it back to you. Um, the amount of times people just leave their notepad or bits of paper on the table after a lesson, and if it doesn't have your name on, you're very unlikely to get that back unless you realise you've lost it. So if you pop your name in it, we'll know it's you, and then we can give it back to you. The title, so the title for this uh, session, I guess, is Charges, or How to Find a Charge. And then the date. The date's really important because if your folder comes undone and a hundred bits of paper splatter out over your kitchen floor, then you'll be able to put it back in a logical way so that when you come and revise, it'll all flow and it'll make sense. You can't just be stuffing it in in any order. That just will not work. Then down the left-hand side of the page, about a quarter or a third of it is a column for your questions. Don't write anything in that yet. We're going to talk about that in a bit. On your right hand side, the most of the page will be for the notes themselves. And then at the bottom, just leave a, a fairly sizable chunk where we're going to do a summary of what's on the page. And again, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a bit. So if you get that page set up, please. So what we're going to talk about is how to figure out the charges of chemicals. Now first of all, if something has a charge, it's called an ion. So I'm not going to be mentioning the word atom at all today, and if I do, that would be a massive slip-up. Something which would cost me a mark in the exam every time I did it. So things without a charge, individual atoms, are atoms. If an atom has a charge, we no longer call it an atom, we would call it an ion. So if you've never heard the word ion before, all it means is a thing with a charge, basically. Either positive or negative. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this and I'd like you to try and in your notes section have a stab at making notes on what I say. Now, the more concise, as in the shorter your notes, the better. If you've been copying down word for word everything I've said now, you're going to have a lot of things which aren't super important in your notes. Right? So what you need to do is pick out the really key bits, the, the facts, the information, the methods, and get that down. So have a go at that. Don't worry about the questions and don't worry about the summary. We'll come back to that at the end. When you do set out your notes as well, can you make sure every new fact or method has its, a new line to it? Because when we start writing questions next to them later on, you're going to want them to sync up. Okay? So a series of facts or methods. Okay, here we go. So on the left-hand side of the periodic your left-hand side of the periodic table, we have our metals. There's something called the boron step, which separates the metals from the non-metals. So all of these are our metals. If you are asked, or if you need to figure out the charge of a metal element, like a single ion, they're dead simple. Your group one metals here, these all have a charge of, well, I should say, plus one. Your group two metals here, these all have a charge of two. Your group three metals here, so one, two, three, these are going to have a charge of three, or three plus. And we'll kind of stop there. So group one is one plus, group two is two plus, group three is three plus. And remember, boron is a non-metal, so that doesn't include boron. Also, we've got our D block, that's this bit in the middle. Now, you can't really tell just by looking at which group they're in what the charges are of stuff in the D block, because they're a little bit weird, they work slightly differently. But there are a few which you just kind of need to memorise, and they are these. Copper is 2+. plus. It can also be 1+, plus, but usually it's 2+. plus. Zinc is 2+. Plus. Iron... Iron can either be 2 plus or iron can be 3 plus, can actually change. And then we've got silver, which is AG1 plus. Okay, so they're the ones at the metals out of the D block you just have to memorize. Moving on to the non metals on your right hand side, 
These on our far right are called the noble gases. These do not have a charge. They have a charge of zero. Your halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, these are one minus. You can probably see how this is going. And then oxygen, sulfur, selenium, etc., two minus. Nitrogen, phosphorus, etc., three minus. And we'll stop there. So if you want to know what the charges of the metal are, start on the far left, then it's one, two, three. If you want to know the charges of the non-metals, start on the right, and it's zero, minus one, minus two, minus three. So that's how we can tell the charges of an element ion. But we've also got things called molecular ions. Now, these aren't individual elements, these are whole molecules. And there's only a few we need to know. And you can't get these from the periodic table because molecules, things consisting of more than one atom, and atom is the right word there, um, molecules don't appear on the periodic table. We only have elements. So you can't figure out the molecular ions from the periodic table. You have to just memorize them. So flashcards and boot camping works perfectly for this. So they're as follows. Nitrate, NO3 minus, has a charge of minus. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Carbonate is CO3 2 minus. And then hydroxide is OH minus. We've also got um, ammonium, NH4 plus. And phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. So you just have to absolutely memorize them. Write them down 50 times. As in write it down, cover it up, try and write it out from memory, check. Do that 50 times, and then a week later, do it another 50 times, and then you'll remember them. They're ridiculously important. I would say out of all of them, these molecular ions are the most important ones to remember. Okay. So that's how we figure out the charges of stuff. Uh, if you could look at the notes you've made now, I've kind of done a Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. What we're going to do is use these notes to come up with questions. So I'm, I'm going to show you my example. Here's what I got. And you might have got something slightly different with lots of ways to have written this down. I start off by talking about what is the charge of the metal ions. Now, you won't have written your questions down now, because in a lesson, you just don't have time to do that, right? Things are going too quick. Good, get your notes down. I wouldn't write down the questions. When you're going back through your notes at home, which you definitely need to do, then you can write in the questions. So I've written down group one is one plus, etc., etc., and I've written down those few which I just need to memorize. Well, the question which would go with that is, what is the charge of metal ions? The reason this is really insanely useful is when I now go back through my notes in a month or in a year's time, I can really quickly see why I've bothered to write these notes down. You know, what is it this notes is telling me? And then that'll help me uh, re-pick it up later on. I then moved on to my non-metals. I decided to get notes for this in a slightly different way. I just very quickly sketched down the periodic table and I just wrote the charge as zero, one minus, two minus, three minus in the columns there. Probably if I'd have had a more time, a sentence to go with that would have been really nice too. So what goes with that then? What is the charge of non-metal ions? And then very finally, we had all of our, which we have to memorize, molecular ions. And the question, of course, would be, what are the molecular ion charges? After we've done that, it's really useful to do a little bit of a summary, just so that when you come back to this page, and remember, I mean, the work you do in September, you're going to have to review it literally two years later, almost. It's like a year and nine months later. So you have forgotten a lot of this stuff. So it's really helpful just to have a few little sentences just to sum up what's on the page, what it is you need to know about it. So all I've said is we can find the charge of elements by looking at the periodic table. And then that obviously if I want more detail on that, I can look into my notes. And we must memorize the formula of the molecular ions to remind myself I can't get that from the periodic table. 
So this is kind of roughly what your notes should look like. Um, when you're doing independent study, do the questions as you go along. When you're doing notes in lesson, I would leave the questions and the summary until you review your notes back at home, like the following day or whatever. Okay, thank you very much.